This is Speak Up. Speak Up on Spin. Intimate, intimate image abuse on Spin. Intimate image abuse, as the name suggests, is the act of sharing an intimate film, video or photograph um, without a person's consent in a manner which does or might cause harm to that person. Generally how that man manifests itself is in, in two scenarios. The first is self-generated content where um, an individual or a couple are in um, an intimate uh, or casual relationship um, and the content is shared between the two in a private capacity. The other scenario whereby that may well manifest itself is where an intimate image of a person is inadvertently accorded without their knowledge. In the first scenario it may be that the relationship subsequently ends um, and one of the parties then puts the intimate image into the public domain. In the second scenario the party may not know about the, image, the existence of the intimate image until such time as it emerges in the public domain. The intimate image is defined within the act itself but put uh, very simply it's defined as a a film, video or digital representation of a person's genitals, uh, buttocks or anus, or in the case of a female, or breasts. Um, it's also um, a visual rep representation of, a per of any of those regions um, uh, where a person is wearing underwear. It also uh, refers to a person captured in the nude or a person engaged in sexual activity. Before Coco's Law or the Harassment um, Harmful Communications and Related Offence Act came into being on the 10th of February 2021, the act of actually sharing an image wasn't a criminal offence in itself. There had to be some other element present. Coco's Law changed all that. And now the situation is that if an intimate image is shared without the consent of a person, um, in a circumstance where harm, where there's an intent to cause harm, where a person is reckless to cause harm, or in a manner which um, seriously interferes with a person's peace and privacy, then that's an offence. And that was the reason behind Coco's Law. There are three specific offences under that Act. The first is Section 2, which is distributing, publishing, threatening to distribute or publish an intimate image without consent, with intent to cause harm, or being reckless as to whether harm is caused. And that's the most serious of the offences under this particular legislation in that it carries um, a maximum sentence of seven years imprisonment um, and a limited fine. The second offence under that particular legislation is recording, distributing or publishing an intimate image without consent in a, man in a manner that seriously interferes with that other person's peace or privacy or causes alarm, distress or harm to that other person. This particular uh, offence carries a penalty uh, of 12 months imprisonment and, 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 and or a fine. The final uh, piece of legislation under, that, uh, under this Act is distributing, publishing or sending threatening or grossly offensive communications with intent to cause harm and that has a maximum prison sentence of two years in prison and or a fine. Any person who receives an intimate image, whether that's unrequited, whether it's in, in, inadvertent or whether it's unsolicited, who then subsequently sends that image on renders themselves liable to prosecution, in my opinion, under Section 3 of that Act. And Garda Siakona have recently engaged with a joint initiative with Hotline.ie. And, hot, and what we put in place there is an online intimate image abuse reporting pro, uh, portal. Um, and that particular mechanism enables a person to report online. Um, and the person can, uh, can request two actions. And one action is not reliant on the other. They can request both actions or they can request one or other of the actions. But essentially what it enables them to do is to request hotline.ie to um, remove the content and hotline.ie will, if the content is available and it's possible to remove it, contact the service provider and try to, try to have that content removed or prevent it from being disseminated further. What will happen thereafter is hotline will notify in Garda Síochána. Um, and there's a specialist unit within the Garda National a protective services bureau who will receive that report um, and the approach we will follow thereafter is a three-pronged approach the first will be if it's a scenario whereby there's a possibility that the intimate image content can be disseminated elsewhere will be immediately to try and ring fence and contain that further dissemination um, and it will involve trying to re trying to retrieve evidence to sustain a further prosecution the second aspect will be whereby a scenario exists that it's not possible to further that to further disseminate the content but there's evidence to be gleaned from the report. In those circumstances and Garda Síochána will engage with the service provider to harness whatever evidence is available. And the third aspect of that particular reporting mechanism is that hotline where somebody doesn't wish to pursue a criminal complaint, hotline.ie will, if it's possible, 
to remove the content and the person requests only that they want the content to be removed will engage with the service provider with a view to trying to achieve that goal. Invariably, in my experience, there may be initial feelings of fear or embarrassment. What I would say is don't be afraid to come forward. Reach out to Angarda Siakona or reach out via the hotline.ie intimate image abuse reporting um, portal. We're here to help and we want to help. And the reality is until such time as you take a stand by reporting the matter, it's highly probable that the intimate image abuse will continue.